Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends, get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, our viewers. Once again, you are welcome to our daily fountain devotional meditation. This morning, we are looking at the topic, the loss of all meaningful existence. Will that ever be? Yes, it will be. Our text is taken from the book of Revelations chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. Before I read, let us pray. Dear Lord, it baffles our mind that your word declared that a time is going to come when all these things which our hearts are fixed on will no longer be meaningful. And Lord, we beg you, before that time comes, prepare our hearts to focus on the main thing which is you and eternity and with you in, in heaven. Father, as we get into your word, as we speak into your word, inspire our hearts, prepare our lives, and may that day never come to us unprepared. This is our prayer. All brethren that are listening to me this morning, put the appropriate spirit in them, the Holy Spirit, so that your word will explain in details, even beyond our speech, this is our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Revelations chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star falling from heaven to earth, and he was giving the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were giving power like the power of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green plant, or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. In appearance, the locusts were like horses prepared for battle. On their heads we are what look like crowns of gold. Their faces we are like human faces. And their hair like women's hair. And their teeth like lion's teeth. They had breastplate like breastplates of iron. And the noise of their wings was like the noise of many chariots with horses rushing into battle. They have tails and stings like scorpions. And their power to hurt people for five months is in their tails. They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon. And in Greek, he is called Apollyon. The first woe has passed. Behold, two woes are still to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As earlier stated, our topic says loss of all meaningful existence. You will agree with me that we are read this morning is quite frightening. What a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the Almighty God. 
What a terrible thing to be a victim of God's wrath. It is indeed very fearful. The most astonishing of all these plagues is that one under them cannot pass out, cannot die. It would have been better if one died when you are being subjected to these humanizing plagues. Look at what verse 4 says. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth. They were told not to harm the green plant or any tree. But only those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. You can imagine that. Grasses, trees, we are preferred. Don't harm the grass. Don't harm the trees. But harm, deal with, severely punish everyone that doesn't have God's seal on his forehead. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 6, we see something similar to that. It reads, Kill old men outright, young men and maidens, little children and women, but touch no one on whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the house. You can imagine God told Ezekiel also in the book of Ezekiel 9 verse 6, get into the city. Anyone that doesn't have my mark, beginning from those at the sanctuary, deal with them, kill them. Old, young, men, women, maidens, children, once you do not see my mark on their foreheads, kill them. Brethren, everything in life is meaningless. And God is the one who is the summation of everything meaningful. It is very comforting that our God makes adequate provision for his children in the face of these plagues. That is one beautiful thing about God. Our God is not a taskmaster. Our God is not a God that is a, a kind of um, unsympathetic about his children. In the midst of every plague, in the midst of every calamity, you see God making an escape route. Did we not see that in the book of Exodus? When Moses came to ask that the children of Israel should leave Egypt, and Pharaoh was saying, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. And God began with his plagues. And we are told that much as God was raining those plagues on Egypt, when you come to the land of Goshen, they had peace. There was nothing that was happening devastatingly in the land of Goshen. That is what God does. And if you belong to him, you can be secured. Again, in the book of Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, the Amplified Version puts it in a very uh, clear manner. It states, Therefore, he is able also to save to the uttermost, completely, perfectly, finally, and for all times and eternity, those who come to God through him, since he is always living to make petition to God and intercede with him and intervene for them. We see that again, Hebrews 7, 25, that God doesn't just abandon his children. When he is outpouring his plague on mankind, he secures his own children. Why will you not run under this security that God provides? Why? We are in a world where several things are happening. Each time I look at the vanity of this life, I wonder what is in it that will make one not to run into God. Everything on earth actually is meaningless. We are born today. Tomorrow you start getting old. If you are not getting old, you get sick. If you, are not getting, if you are not sick, one tragedy or the other. 
the houses we build today, tomorrow they become old fashioned. The cars we have today, tomorrow they become out of model cars. Everything we have in this world is meaningless. The only place we can find purpose is in God. The only place we can find security is in God. The only place we can find assurance is in God. And God is able to keep unto the uttermost those who put their trust in him. I beg you, my brother, as you go about your business today, don't struggle with people over things that will soon fizzle out. Don't engage in tantrums. Don't dissipate your energy on things that doesn't have eternal value. Look at the way we are pursuing money. Yes, you must go out and work. You must get educated. You must get married if God wishes so. By all means and standards, find something doing. But at the back of your mind, don't lose sight of the fact that everything in life is meaningless. When God told our brother who was writing the book of Revelation, says, put these things down, they will surely come to pass that everything in life is meaningless. I encourage you, stick to God. It is in God that we find fulfillment. God has created man and opened our lives, put a vacuum in us which only him can fill. If you do not have God, I bet you there is nothing in life that will be meaningful to you. One of the virtues of being a child of God is that you view things of life with the eyes of contentment. That was why our brother Paul said in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 downwards, I know how to be rich. I know how to also be empty. I know how to be full. I also know how to go hungry. Verse 13 states, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you have Christ, you have fulfillment. Fulfillment are not in things because the scriptures tell us clearly that they are meaningless. They are meaningless. A great Puritist writer, Jeremiah Borough, states that contentment in life comes by subtraction not by addition. What did he mean by that? Many of us think that we will get contentment, we will get satisfaction in things of the world. But Jeremiah Borough says, no, that's not the way to get contentment. Contentment is your ability to have a peaceful life when those things are not there. You will say, when I get a good car, I'll be happy. When I get children, I'll be happy. When I get married, I'll be happy. When I build a country home, I'll be happy. When I get a degree, I'll be happy. Yes, you think that satisfaction comes. Fulfillment comes through those things. But from what we read this morning, that is not the channel through fulfillment. The only channel through fulfillment is in God. Do you have the mark of God? Do you belong to Christ? Is there any relationship that you have with him? It comes from the boils of your heart. Every day you are joyful in the Holy Ghost. You are satisfied that your father loves you. You are not uh, shaken by the chances and things of our time. You are absolutely content with the Lord. Everything in life is meaningless. Have you not seen couples that are together and suddenly one passes away? Have you not seen a beloved child who has gone for youth service, finished serving, and about to come back home and gets involved in a fatal accident and dies? 
in the midst of those tragedies. Life, life means nothing to the parents. It didn't begin that. It didn't begin then. God states everything in life is meaningless, and everything you see will eventually come to naught. That is why I pity anyone who doesn't have a relationship with Christ. Never mind those who are consistently amassing wealth to the detriment of their soul. Jesus says, what shall it profit a man to gain the entire world and lose your soul? Or what shall man give in exchange for his soul? The cost of your soul cannot be equated with anything that is material. Everything in life actually is meaningless. The only meaningful thing is God. He is the only one that you will have and your life will have a meaning. Never mind the caricature. Never mind the deprivations. Never mind the mockery. You have God. You have everything. Did you not read what Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes? Look at the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and do what he has told you. For everything in life is vanity upon vanity. This morning, as you go out, bear in mind that everything in life is meaningless. A time is going to come to our world when everything that the people of the world are pursuing will be like a ruse. It will be meaningless. It will be like a vapor. They are intangible. But those whose lives are pegged to the Lord will have fulfillment. Do you have the mark? Revelation 9 verse 4. Go! Destroy everything. Spare the, gra the grass. Spare the trees. But anyone that doesn't have my mark, make sure that person is subjected to torture. When these things will be happening, my brother, my sister, my uncle, where will you be? The loss of every meaningful existence. But in heaven, everything will find fulfillment. Look at Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. A new heaven and a new earth. Where the old has passed away. There will not be any more death, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sickness. For all those things have passed away. That is the hope of the believer. Not on things that are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. But the ones that are not seen are permanent. This morning I charge you as you go out. May your relationship with the Lord be cordial. Let not sin affect the sanctity of that relationship. Move in the power of the Holy Ghost. Live your life as a pilgrim. On the day when God will summarize the earth, when everything will be meaningless, you would have been found a very wise man. My prayer is that God will put these things to your heart and you should walk therein. Let us pray. Dear Lord, once again you've reminded us that a time will come when there will be loss of every meaningful existence. Our world is subject to chaos. Everything will be thrown down and destroyed. No wonder Peter said, what manner of men ought you to be, seeing that these things shall be destroyed? We are expected to live soberly. We are expected to live as people who know that we have no continuing city here. Lord, our prayer is that as many as have heard this devotion this morning, it will be in our hearts to walk consciously, knowing that nothing here is continuous. Give us the grace to treat with levity all things that have earthly attractions, but with our full heart embrace you and your kingdom things. This is our prayer, Lord. Imprint it, engrave it on our hearts, even as we walk throughout today. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. 
We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.